The U.S. Navy has launched USS Cleveland Freedom Class Littoral Combat Ship, LCS. The ship is the 16th and last of a controversial class of vessels that have been plagued by technical issues. Unfortunately, during the launching, the ship had a collision with a tugboat. The Navy said no personnel injuries occurred, but there was limited damage to the Cleveland. The damaged area is well above the waterline and no flooding occurred. U.S. Navy described what happened as an unintentional contact between the ship and a supporting tug. It's unlikely that the incident will have a major impact. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why the USS Cleveland LCS-31 is a key addition to the U.S. Navy. Let's get started. A literal combat ship, or LCS, is a set of two classes, the Independence and the Freedom. Construction of the Freedom class is spearheaded by Lockheed Martin at Fincantieri Marinette Marine Shipyard in Wisconsin, while that of Independence class ships is led by Austal, USA, and Alabama. These are relatively small surface vessels and primarily designed for operations near shore. During the late 1990s, the U.S. Navy understood that cruisers and destroyers would be vulnerable to attacks in shallow coastal waters. Large warships are designed for open ocean warfare and not for shallow water, where these can be targeted by high-speed boats, missile-firing fast attack craft, small submarines, sea mines, and land and air-launched anti-ship missiles. The idea behind the literal combat ship, as described by former Secretary of the Navy Gordon R. England, is to create a small, fast, maneuverable, and relatively inexpensive member of the DDX family of ships. If required, these ships will absorb an attack and protect the much more expensive cruiser or destroyers. The LCS is envisioned to be a networked, agile, stealthy, surface combatant capable of defeating anti-access and asymmetric threats in coastal waters. Interestingly, the LCS has a modular design. The vessels can be configured with different modules for specific roles that include anti-submarine warfare, mine countermeasures, anti-surface warfare, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, homeland defense, maritime intercept, special operations, and logistics. The USS Cleveland has a length of 115 meters, or 378 feet, and a displacement of 3,500 tons when fully loaded. The ship uses two gas turbines and two diesel engines to power four steerable water jets. USS Cleveland has a speed of 87 kilometers per hour, or 54 miles per hour, and has a range of 6,500 kilometers, or 4,000 miles. It accommodates 50 core crew, plus up to 15 mission crew. USS Cleveland can carry up to one MH-60RS Seahawk, or two MQ-8B Fire Scouts, or one MQ-8C Fire Scout. The Sikorsky MH-60RS Seahawk is a twin turboshaft engine, multi-mission, United States Navy helicopter based on the United States Army UH-60 Blackhawk and a member of the Sikorsky S-70 family. The Northrop Grumman MQ-8 Fire Scout is an unmanned autonomous helicopter developed by Northrop Grumman for use by the United States Armed Forces. The Fire Scout is designed to provide reconnaissance, situational awareness, aerial fire support, and precision targeting support for ground, air, and sea forces. USS Cleveland is a semi-planing steel monohull with an aluminum superstructure. The design incorporates a large, reconfigurable C-frame to allow rapidly interchangeable mission modules, a flight deck with integrated helicopter launch, recovery and handling system, and the capability to launch and recover boats, manned and unmanned, from both the stern and side. USS Cleveland is equipped with several sensors and control system, which includes EADS, North American TRS-4D, air and surface search radar. It's a three-dimensional, multifunction naval radar combining mechanical and electronic azimuth scanning, 
that delivers increased sensitivity to detect smaller targets with greater accuracy and faster track generation. It also possesses ANSQR-20 multifunction tote array. Lockheed Martin Combats 21 Combat Management System is present for oversight of different operations. For electronic warfare, it has Argon ST WBR 2000 ESM system, and for decoy, it has Terma AS SKWS. The Freedom class has encountered issues with its propulsion system due to a design flaw, and the Navy acknowledged in 2021 that fixes on the acquired vessels would take years. There are also talks of decommissioning nine of these very new warships, though the number may be reduced to four. USS Cleveland will be armed by a variety of weapons. One BAE Systems Mark 110 57mm gun. One Raytheon C-RAM CIWS close-in weapon system. Four 50 caliber guns, two aft and two forward. Two 30mm Mark 44 Bushmaster II guns, part of SUW module. 24 AGM 114L Hellfire missiles planned part of SUW module, or eight NSMs in deck-mounted canisters. Naval strike missiles, or NSMs, will be the most powerful weapon of the USS Cleveland, and once integrated will enable it to take on much larger opponents. NSM is the upgrade of Kongsberg's Penguin short-to-medium-range anti-ship guided missile. The missile has a range of 100 nautical miles, or 185 kilometers, and is capable of high subsonic speeds. Importantly, it can be used as an anti-ship missile and for taking out land targets. NSM will be placed on the decks of LCSs through a proprietary canister launcher. The U.S. Navy has about 10 active supercarriers, almost 70 Arleigh Burke-class destroyers, 17 active Ticonderoga-class cruisers, as well as several other surface combatants, like WASP-class amphibious assault ships. The powerful warships have made the American Navy's surface fleet to be the most formidable one. With the inclusion of littoral combat ship like USS Cleveland, the U.S. Navy will be able to plug certain holes like operating in constrained places. For example, there are several passages in the world oceans that are narrow, like the Strait of Hormuz, where even much less competent force can trouble much better equipped force. The relatively smaller but very agile USS Cleveland will significantly improve the combat flexibility of the U.S. Navy as it faces asymmetric threats from countries like Iran, as well as help in taking on even stronger Chinese and resurgent Russian navies. The integration of the naval strike missile will provide USS Cleveland with an excellent surface-to-surface -surface capability and aligns it with the U.S. Navy's distributed lethality concept that aims to disperse firepower across different platforms. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.